Healthy firms find ways to look for the psychological pitfalls that infect the processes and to put measures in place to mitigate them. How does that, how is that done? It's done basically in, in ways we could talk about uh, uh, a framework uh, called the Sheedy Griffin Risk Management Profile Framework that says, uh, let's think about three broad concepts. The first are called risk management structures. So what are risk management structures? They're the standard operating procedures, the policies, the systems, what lie at the heart of compliance. High level structures emphasize high quality risk management. Okay. Part of it is level, you can, it's reflected in levels of compensation. How well do, organi how well do organizations compensate people in risk management and compliance. You get what you pay for. How much training is done in order to help people in an organization understand what is expected of them in and being able to execute in terms of risk management and compliance. What are the key performance indicators and to what extent do those incorporate elements of risk? To what extent are key risk indicators part of key performance indicators explicitly not implicitly so those are the structures okay, specifics then there's culture which is more qualitative but every bit as important so to what extent is risk management clearly valued within the organization to what extent are people proactive within the organization about addressing risk management issues? Is your manager a good role model in terms of risk management? So in companies where the culture is strong in risk culture, when people talk about the people to whom they report, they regard them as good risk management role models. And people are just on guard about watching for breaches in risk management. Strong cultures are strong along these dimensions. And finally, behavior. So in organizations where the behaviors are strong, where risk management behaviors are strong, people are not afraid to speak their mind to their superiors. People are, not, people are encouraged to be devil's advocate to suggest when a, when a proposal is on the table, what might be wrong with the proposal as well as what's right. Um, they are willing to issue warnings if they feel that risk management is being assigned a low priority or if rules are being bent in order to accomplish goals. So rules were bent at the chief investment office in London when those losses started to mount. When every single credit risk limit was breached, these were rules being bent as a result of a loss being occurred. Do people monitor for signs of overconfidence? So, the Japanese case of Fukushima Daiichi was a great example of having a management team that was so overconfident that they had, that they protected their plants from, from disaster and danger. And again, I remind you, that plant worked pro appropriately when the earthquake happened. Everything worked as expected. It was the tsunami that was the problem. People who are overconfident are surprised much more frequently than they anticipate. You can score organizations on strength. You can do a risk management profile score and get a sense of where the vulnerabilities are. This is, I think, an important thing to do as we look forward as a way of bringing psychological insights into the organizational framework to assess overall strength.